Hey what's up creators, today we're going to be getting started with the build for our heads up display showing common elements such as our health bar, stamina bar and our ammo and weapon that we've currently got equipped. We're going to be breaking this down into two videos, the first of which is going to be showing you how we can set up the layout and the functionality to display our values on the screen and then the next video we're going to be showing you how to bring in custom assets to make this heads up display look awesome. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive straight into Unreal Engine 5. So the very first thing that we're going to be doing inside of Unreal Engine is creating what's called a user interface widget. This is going to contain graphical information in 2D form and any code to make this come to life. We can do this by right clicking in the content browser and I'm going to do this in my blueprints folder and I'm going to right click and add a user interface widget blueprint using the common type user widget. And I'm going to be giving this a name WB underscore FBS HUD. This is going to be our heads up display. Double click on this to open it up. And inside of here, we're going to have our design view in our UMG editor where we can do all of the graphical stuff. And then in the graph view in the top right hand corner, this is where we can start writing all of our code and our functionality to bring all of this to life. With that being said, what I want you to do is go back to your design view. And in our palette, we need to add something called a canvas panel. Drag and drop this into the scene. This is going to give us a canvas where we can start adding components onto the screen. What we're going to do is just take a look at the reference for a second and see the elements we've got on here. We've got two bars, one for stamina, one for health. We've also got our ammunition, which comes in the form of our current ammo, a little slash, and then our total ammo. And then we've also got a gun name and a gun image. Let's hop into Unreal here and show you how we can start creating those elements. All of those elements are going to be found in the palette in the top left hand corner. With this, I can add in things like text or progress bars or images to form all of this. What I want you to do is start off by adding in two progress bars. So palette, progress bars, and then drag and drop these into your scene. Every time you add an element, I want to make sure you anchor it. Anchoring this is going to say, hey, I want to make sure this is always fixed to this corner or this point on the screen. We can anchor it by going to the details in the top right hand corner and then choosing the corner this should be attached to. For the progress bar, that's the bottom left. Then I'm going to add another progress bar in here. I'm just going to scale it to size. And then I'm going to go up to the top right hand corner and anchor it to the left hand side. That is our two bars. We're going to be setting up how that looks later on. What I want us to do now is just move on to the next piece which is going to be for our text for our ammunition. Just go up to the palette, select our text and drag it in. With this, we're going to go up to the details on the right hand side and we're going to set the text under content to 00, zero for now. If you wanted to adjust the font and the color, you can do that under appearance. But for now, I'm just going to add a few more pieces of text by simply dragging that on. I'm going to set this next piece of text to just have that slash there. And then the third piece of text is just going to be zero, zero again. So what we have here is our ammo in our current magazine, the little slash, and then the total ammo we've got available to us. Just like everything else, we need to select this and anchor it to the bottom right hand corner. And just do that on every single piece that we've added in here. And then with this, we're just going to line these up nicely until you have something that looks like this. Don't worry if it doesn't look too pretty right now, we are going to be styling this up in the next video. Once we've done this, we're just going to be adding in one more piece of text, which is going to have the content text name set to gun underscore M4A1, which is just a placeholder right now. Anchor that to the bottom right. And then we're also going to have an image for the icon for the weapon. Again, just anchor that to the bottom right. We are, of course, going to be changing all of these graphics, um, fonts, sizes later on. Once we've done this, we can go ahead and press compile and save this and we can get started with the next step. 
The next step that we have here now then is actually getting this displayed on the user's screen so they can see it and they can work with this. To do that, we're just going into that character blueprint of ours, loading it onto the memory and adding it to the viewport. It's just a couple of very simple, straightforward blueprints. So back in our content browser, we're gonna find our first person character. So first person BP, blueprints and first person character. Double click on this to open it up. We're then going to find our blueprint event for event begin play. And after we've set our weapon variable here, what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna drag out and we are going to create a widget. And this is going to load a widget onto the memory. So for us, we can go to class and set that to widget blueprint underscore FBS HUD that we created earlier. And then from our return value, we can simply add this to the viewport and then press compile. If we minimize this and press play, we can now see we have our heads up display displayed and we have all of our elements. I can still shoot and move around just like we could before. So now we have our heads up display. We now need to show you how we can start taking data for things like our ammo and our health and actually linking that to our heads up display. So when we start adding in our combat systems and everything else later on, all of this is going to be up to date. So let's hop in and do that. So for us to link data, we actually need to have some data. We can find this in our first person character. We've not got any data yet under variables. We need to create these. So variables, we're going to press plus variable. And the first variable we're going to be creating is our current ammo. To create that, press the plus, And then with the current ammo, we're gonna set this to an integer. An integer is just a whole number. This current ammo just says how much ammo there is in the current magazine. I can set the default value in the details on the right hand side. You can see right now I can't do that because I need to compile the blueprint still. So go up to the top left hand corner, press the compile button, and I'm going to set the default value there to 30. I'm also going to create another variable with the name total ammo. And again, use the integer type, press compile, and I'm gonna set that default value there to 120. So we have the current magazine, and then we've got enough to fill that magazine for more time. So that's some simple data we've got. Let's go ahead and link this up to our heads up display. So just go back to your widget blueprint FBS HUD, and then where we've got these text values, we now need to find a way to link these to those variables in our character. And the way we're gonna be doing this is by using a text binding. This is going to essentially allow us to bind the text to a variable, and we can get that variable from our first person character. So select your current ammo here on the left, go to details, content and text, and we're going to create a binding. With our get text zero, we're going to drag out from this and we are going to do cast to first person character. And as our first person character, we are going to get the current ammo. And we can put this into our return value. So what we've done is said, hey, we want to talk to our first person character. Then what we've done is we have asked it, what is the current ammo? And then we've just put it into our binding in the return value. We also need to go to our object wildcard and set this to get player character. Awesome. Because this is basically a function, what we need to do is we need to go to our get text under function here and just rename this to get current ammo text. Then we're gonna go ahead and press compile on this. If I minimize this now and press play, we can see in the bottom right hand corner it's showing the variable from our character. It's set to 30, which is perfect. With that being said, we're gonna go through and do the exact same thing for our total ammo as well. So select our total ammo text, go to text and create a binding. And then with this, we're gonna drag out and we're gonna to cast to our first person character again. 
And then as a first person character, we're gonna say, hey, get the value of total ammo and put this into our binding. Then object wildcard, again, we're just going to search for get player character because that is the object type. Rename the function in the top left to get total ammo text, press compile. And once this is done, if we press play, we can now see we've got 30 out of 120. We've got our ammo working. So at this point, you should now have your ammo being displayed correctly on the screen. And if we had a system in place where we take away one ammo every single time we shoot, this will be updating live. The next thing that we need to do now then is we need to show you how to connect those progress bars, the health bars, to actual values in our first person character. It's going to be a little bit different, but also a little bit similar all at the same time. Let's jump in and do just that. So going back to our first person character, we can add a couple more variables. The first one I'm going to add is going to be called health. And the variable type for this is going to be float. And if I compile the value, I can set the default value to 100. This is our health. Every time we take damage, we just reduce this variable. We can also go to plus variable and also add in our stamina. Again, using that float variable type, and we can set that default value to 100 again. And we hit compile. With that done, we can now go back to our FPS HUD, go to our design view, and we can create a binding for this progress bar. It's a little bit different in the sense that we're not just binding text. We're actually taking the progress percentage value and just turning this up and down. And you'll see with this, it goes from zero to one rather than zero to 100. So we have to do a little bit of maths to make all of this work. So what I want you to do is go ahead and select your health bar at the bottom, go to the details, progress and percent, and we're gonna create a new binding. And again, we're going to cast to our first person character. Object wildcard is going to be get player character. And then as first person character, we're going to get our health. Now we need to show this as a value going between zero and one. And the way we're gonna do this is by just taking our health here, and then we're going to do divide, and we're gonna divide this by the maximum value, which is 100. And we can take the result of that and put it into the return value. What we've just done here is just converted our health value from zero to 100 to zero to one, in a way that the progress bar can actually interpret this. If I go ahead and press compile on this, minimize and play, we can see my health bar is now full. It's a little blue bar in the bottom left. If I open up my first person character and take my health and set this to something like 35 or something else, and then press compile, I can then see that value has gone down. Our health bar is working exactly as it should be. So if we took health in any way, this heads up display now is going to automatically recognize that. So what I want you to do is go into our FPS HUD, rename that function, and then we're gonna be moving on to the stamina function in just a second. So get health bar percent. And you can name that whatever you want, but that's what I'm working with there. Then go back to our design view, select the stamina bar this time, create a binding for that percentage. Again, we're going to cast to our first person character with the object wildcard. That's gonna be get player character. Then as the first person character, I'm gonna drag out and get stamina. And we're simply just using the divide function to divide that by 100 to get it to a value that the progress bar can understand. Rename that function in the top left-hand corner, right click on it, and get stamina bar percentage. And again, what we've done here is said, hey, we want to communicate with the first person character. We've then asked it what this stamina is, 
and we've divided it by 100 to make sure it goes between 0 and 1. If I go ahead and press compile, minimize and play, we can see we've now got our bar and it's completely full and it's completely linked up to our stamina. So now what we have is our stamina bar and our health bar and they're both linked to those variables. One thing that we do need to do is just change the color of these bars so we can differentiate them so we know which is which when we're styling this in one of the next videos. To do this, we're just going to hop back into that FBS HUD widget and we're going to change a few settings. So open up that FBS HUD widget and go into the design view. Inside of here, we're just going to select our bottom bar and we're going to be making this fill up as red rather than blue. Click this, go to fill color and opacity, and we're just going to set this to a nice red. And now when that percentage goes up and down, if we press compile, that bottom bar is going to be red and the top bar is going to be blue. So now we know which one's health, which one stamina. That's it for this video. By now, you have your weapon set up. We've got a heads up display set up with our functionality for health, the stamina, and for our ammo. In the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at how we can stylize all of this and make it look really, really good. If you want a little bit of help with this, be sure to join our Discord server. There's over 5,000 like-minded developers just like yourselves. Also, if you'd like to support more free training just like this, be sure to check out our Patreon page and unlock exclusive perks such as early access to our videos, easy to use game templates, and live mentoring every single week. Be sure to jump into the next video to continue your FPS. As always though, stay awesome, keep creating, Virtus signing out.